after completing unit 6 let us now discuss unit 7 which is human communities and environment the first topic in this unit is human population growth there is a tremendous increase in human population seen all over the world in the past few years this is this can be attributed to technological development and also development in the medical technology and research so new uh, medicines have come forward new treatments to various diseases which earlier used to be epidemics have come forward therefore you can say that the number of deaths have reduced over the past few years in comparison to the number of births or the natality rate is much higher compared to the mortality rate therefore there is a tremendous increase in the earth's population see in 1800s it was around 1 billion by 2050 United Nations projection is that the earth population will reach 9.2 billion. Currently we are 8 billion people all around the world. So you can imagine that 1800 it was 1 billion and now it is 8 billion. So there is a tremendous increase in the global population. This is also because population increases geometrically but the resources that are available they increase arithmetically and therefore we can see, see uh, various uh, impact on the environment due to increasing human population. Let us now discuss the impact of human population growth on environment. See, increased population is going to put stress on the resources, natural resources that are used uh, to fulfill the basic needs of man that is food, shelter and clothing, isn't it? These are the basic needs of man. So in order to fulfill these, increased population puts a stress on the resources of a particular country. And also due to increased population you can see that there is production of huge amount of waste uh, because the consumption is so and there is no proper methodology to dispose the waste particularly the plastic pollution nowadays you can see it is a serious problem because uh, pl plastic is being dumped in every uh, water source or every soil source which is found and you can see that oceans are uh, spitting up the plastic on the sea shores. So therefore, uh, huge amounts of waste are produced in a country and then how to, de how to manage those waste is again a problem. There is again damage to the environment. There are all sorts of pollution, air, water, soil, every pollution increases, isn't it? Because uh, see, land or for that matter other natural resources also those are limited in order to fulfill the needs of such a huge population first of all a country might not have those resources to fulfill the need and even if it fulfills the need the problems of pollution waste generation are always going to be there unless and until a country or the people manage the these issues uh, on their own then regarding plastic pollution you might have heard of microplastics okay these can uh, these are the creams that you use that is sunscreens and all they have microplastic and when uh, people bathe in the water on the beach so all of these they enter water bodies these are known to accumulate in the body of fish therefore microplastics today are the biggest uh, sources of uh, pollution, plastic pollution via water. Okay. Then 
there is a reduced nutrient quality see uh, to feed such a huge population first of all what is going to be practiced is intensive farming and intensive far intensive farming will try to make utmost use of the land which is available culti uh, cultivable land suppose uh, because it has to feed large number of uh, people the if a country has to feed large number of people then it it will support intensive farming then there will come addition of fertilizers addition of pesticides to prevent the pest all of these chemicals are going to leach into the soil okay soil will become infertile over the years and then the quality of land is lost so there is reduction in the nutrient quality of the land reduction in the nutrient quality of the land will subsequently compromise the health of population health of population is compromised again there will be increased instances of diseases new diseases might crop up then there will be increased instances of certain pest which will favor uh, which uh, will have a favorable environment to grow then insects like mosquitoes so they become common new disease might crop up so these are all the negative aspects of impact of uh, population growth on environment okay so managing the environment becomes difficult because of increasing population growth now let us one discuss these impacts one by one first is impact on agriculture increased global population has resulted in increased demand for food okay food is the basic necessity of every human being so naturally if the population has increased the food demand is going to be increased then for this purpose a country has to clear its forest land isn't it where it will do the cultivation it has to clear the forest for feeding such a huge population so it will try to clear the forest for cultivation of food crops so forests are lost that means there is deforestation again the benefits that are obtained from forest everything is lost over here okay there are number of benefits Uh, from the forest we have seen these previously so deforestation then the land is made available so deforestation again it has its own consequences that there will be reduced uh, levels of oxygen in the air okay oxygen in the air will be reduced because trees are known to purify the uh, atmosphere then home to wild animals again just uh, in the last lecture we have discussed that uh, humans are encroaching uh, encroaching upon the uh, home or shelter of wild animals and therefore a human wildlife conflict is seen so this will again become very common because forests are cleared for agriculture so the home of wild animals is destroyed then there are increased instances of soil erosion soil erosion means see dense tree uh, dense forest cover or large trees are known to hold the top so top soil with the help of their sturdy roots and if that top soil is removed then it can be easily washed away or the top soil becomes loosened due to removal of trees then it can be easily carried out by wind water and other agencies of erosion okay and then i told you that there will be increased instances of human wildlife conflict because humans are encroaching into the shelter of wild animals so they are not naturally going to come into human habitations for food because their homes have been fragmented or shrinked then to feed such a huge population see land is cleared intensive farming methods are practiced i told you intensive farming methods they will try to derive maximum productivity from a given piece of land so there will be more fertilizers used okay more water will be used and more pesticides 
सो ऑन वन हैंड इट विल पुट अ स्ट्रेस ऑन वाटर रिसोर्सेस जिंट इट देन ऑन द अदर हैंड दिस विल अगेन इंक्रीज द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स दैट आर यूज एंड पेस्टिसाइड्स दैट आर यूज सो दोज केमिकल्स विल हैव अगेन एडवर्स इम्पैक्ट ऑन द सॉइल सो देर इज एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन वेन दीज न्यूट्रियस फ्रॉम द सॉइल दे आर वॉश्ड अवे बाय द रेन वॉटर एंड दे रीच द नियर बाय रिवर विच इज क्लोज टू द एग्रीकल्चर लैंड और एनी स्ट्रीम विच इज क्लोज टू द एग्रीकल्चर लैंड देन अगेन देर इज वॉटर पोल्यूशन सो देर फोर देर इज एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन इंक्रीज इन चांसेस ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन ऑल्सो यूज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स टू अ ग्रेटर एक्सटेंट एंड पेस्टिसाइड्स टू अ ग्रेटर एक्सटेंट ओवर द ईयर्स दे एंड कंटिन्यूसली कल्टिवेटिंग द लैंड टू मीट द नीड्स ऑफ ग्रोइंग पॉपुलेशन वॉट हैपन्स इज सॉइल बिकम्स इनफर्टाइल ओवर द ईयर्स और इट लूजेज इट्स क्वालिटी देन रन ऑफ फ्रॉम द फील्ड्स कैरिंग दीज केमिकल्स पर्टिकुलरली द नाइट्रेट्स these reach the nearby water body and they cause eutrophication okay what is eutrophication that the surface of water is covered by growth of plants there is extensive growth of plants and algal blooms we can say and the surface of water is completely covered by these plants so now if a mat of plants is formed on the water surface it is going to affect the penetration of light in the water body when penetration of light is affected what will happen the fish and the other organisms which are living below the water will not get proper light and also there are there is decrease in the level of oxygen in the water body as a result of eutrophication so no sunlight no oxygen then what will happen the water will become inhabitable for various animal and plant species will result in their death okay so these are the impacts of uh, increased human population on the environment that it affects agriculture second fresh water source fresh water uh, in the last semester we have seen what are the percentage of different kinds of water that are available on the earth most of it, it is the oceans water present on the earth is pre- is most of the it is contained in the oceans very less is present as a fresh water source isn't it so the total fresh water sources are again less than 2.5% on the earth can you imagine and the fresh water sources are the ones which are extremely important for the life that is plants human beings and animals in order to survive but those which are available are less than 2.5% okay so increased population again we have discussed in respect of agricultural runoff that agricultural runoffs from the field they carry chemicals and when they enter such water bodies they will cause water pollution and eutrophication then uh, sewage disposal very big problem nowadays isn't it in the highly populated cities see the population is so the amount of sewage that is produced again that has to be handled properly isn't it there have to be sewage treatment plant set up in proportion to the amount of uh, waste that is being produced so it's a huge problem in the populated cities nowadays you might have heard to mitigate the, uh, this problem many uh, buildings they have or many societies they have their own sewage management unit so if they treat the sewage before it is being let out so this is a innovative step or such steps have to be taken in order to reduce the amount of sewage that is generated particularly in the populated cities okay then the industrial effluents again waste waste water from various industries particularly the chemical industries is very very uh, 
dangerous in causing the water pollution because the industrial effluents they contain various uh, chemicals that have effect on the brain or the nervous system then blood okay like lead so all of this is somewhere harming the environment now there was a report by united nations on global water crisis the facts this was released in the year 2021 so it states that 40% of world's population has water scarcity this is a truth okay we are very blessed to live in pune where a uh, lot of uh, water we have proper reservoirs to provide us a clean water but there are many areas where people do not get clean water also they are dependent on the ground water for the purpose of drinking and the ground water at some places is not clean that means the levels of uh, different elements present is but way much higher so we are very blessed to have a clean water source but 40% of the world's population has water scarcity okay that means they have water issues they do not get water this report has also projected that the global demand for water will increase by 50% in the future okay then making clean water accessible is also a challenge to the government because everywhere in the country there is there is no uh, everywhere there are no regions which receive adequate rainfall they have to uh, depend on other water sources like ground water so it is a huge challenge on the part of the government to provide a clean water to its population and when population increases particularly in the developing countries this issue is really um, challenging because in developing countries the resources are not that much present to fulfill the needs of the entire growing population and this is the population of developing countries is only more compared to developed countries so it is a challenge for the government itself to provide clean water access to clean water for drinking okay so this was about the fresh water source that increased human population is going to put a stress on the fresh water sources then third is air pollution pollution of all sorts air water and soil all sorts of pollution increase due to increased uh, human population okay so first of all this issue is faced in the cities okay, which are highly populated now the people here if they think of using individual vehicles instead of using a public transport naturally each vehicle that is being used is going to increase in proportion the amount of emissions that will be caused or released through the automobile so the polluted cities there is first of all increased use of or there are more number of people so they will if they use individual vehicles then it is going to cause greater uh, emissions of air pollutants then industrial development so if see industries and factories these are mostly located in the cities towns or city so over here these are responsible for emitting various types of pollutants so again the problem of air pollution becomes common because the emissions from all these release gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxide particulate matter now all of these gases we have discussed when we were discussing global warming isn't it carbon dioxide carbon monoxide these are all the greenhouse gases and regarding the particulate matter i have shown you one figure that particulate matter less than 2.5 micron meters is highly dangerous because it enters your respiratory system immediately or easily and is responsible for causing respiratory problems so human health is affected 
then there are greenhouse gases given out through these emissions greenhouse gases are responsible for causing global warming nowadays you might be experiencing a high amount of uh, sorry high levels of temperatures in the city this is because of the global warming only because there is increased instances of emissions of greenhouse gases so the earth's atmosphere is getting warmed if we compare the previous years then depletion of ozone layer yes depletion of ozone layers we have seen that uh, refrigerators air conditioners and plastic foams they contain cfcs so there is depletion of ozone layer but see cfcs we have reduced their usage but nitrogen oxides are also ozone depleting substances today they do not come under any international agreement or there is no obligation on reduction of nitro uh, nitrogen oxides but they are potent ozone depleting substance therefore that has to be also taken into consideration regarding ozone layer depletion then there is extinction of species how the species will become extinct first of all see extinction of species means the species will no longer exist on the planet okay it will be completely vanished from the planet because first it will not be able to adapt to the temperature changes okay human beings they can but there are some species particularly the lower animals which are not able to adapt to fluctuating temperatures because there some of their life processes or majority of the life processes are dependent on the temperature or for that matter rainfall also so because of global warming and all these environmental phenomena the weather and the climatic conditions changed we have seen this before so they fail to adapt to these changing climatic conditions and therefore they become extinct second new disease will become new diseases are coming up okay because of the environment also the various insects or other species they undergo change there are increased instances of insects which are pest okay or which cause nuisance to humans and their animals so diseases increase in there is increased instances of uh, new diseases because new strains of virus they come into picture all of these there is no quality of food water pollution is there okay then there are allergies related to the respiratory system because of pollution increased levels of pollution all of these factors what happens is lead to the extinction of the species okay because they are not able to cope up with these changes and having understood the impact on environment let us understand the impact on human health and environment that is the impact of population growth on human population growth on human health and environment we have discussed that there is environmental degradation see if there is agriculture which is affected water source is going to be polluted air is going to be polluted soil pollution is going to increase global warming ozone layer depletion these can be seen so what will happen there is environmental degradation degradation means the quality of environment which is uh, which was present in the past and which was responsible for sustenance of the life is now going to decrease so there is environmental degradation declining food security food security means what if a country has some population some num uh, some arbitrary number imagine and it has to feed that population if it is capable of feeding that particular population then we say that there is food security in the country okay but if the resources present in the country are not able to feed this increasing population 
then what will happen there is decline in the food security so there is decline in food security uncontrolled epidemics this we have seen of communicable disease this happens because there new strains of viruses they come or new strains of pathogens which are responsible for causing various diseases they are coming up then the vectors which transmit these diseases they are growing so they are proliferating at a higher rate so there are epidemics of communicable diseases communicable disease means they are transmitted from one person to other either directly or via a vector organism so chikungunya or dengue all of these they are increasing this is basically because of the increased uh, change in the environment then there are cardiovascular diseases and cancers so there will be increased risks of cardiovascular diseases and cancer why because the, there is decreased levels of nutrients present in the food the food which is food which is produced is not of the quality which was now if you compare the food uh, if you compare in the past and the today the food quality has degraded so it is not that much nutritious nutritious to support the <coughs> health of the individual and increased levels of different chemicals in the water in the food again they are responsible for triggering the cancers different types of cancers are becoming very common in the human population so these are some of the effects of increasing human population on the human health effects of increasing human population on the human health then uh, see again there there is there is economical disparity that means what developed countries they have economic resources they have money isn't it developing countries they might not have economic resources so now developed countries they will provide environments developed countries will provide environments that will enable human development and welfare that means they have resources to manage these issues isn't it they are efficient in managing water pollution air pollution they have that much of money to put into technology and research in order to combat these environmental issues but developing countries are the ones which will suffer the negative impacts of increasing human population because simply they do not have that much of money to feed such a huge population they do not have resources uh, to manage the environmental problems in because most populated are the developing countries many countries of the world which are populated uh, they cannot manage the resources properly so this they are going to because they do not have that much of economy and therefore they are going to suffer most by all of these uh, issues okay environmental issues they will not they are not able to provide facilities and it becomes difficult for such nations to provide even basic facilities such as clean water air food to such a huge population and therefore the there will be increased in instances of issues regarding sewage disposal then health services and also regarding the uh, provision of clean water to their population so definitely the human population growth will have negative impacts on the environment more when we compared it to its positive impacts okay individual actions are also needed in the as individuals also we can contribute through reducing these impacts on the environment by just taking simple simple steps well uh, in global warming also i told you what you can do you can use a bicycle when you have to travel short distances um in a highly populated city one or uh, one can use 
public transport instead of using individual vehicles so small actions can also make larger uh, differences to the environment therefore the impact of human population growth will be seen on various components of the environment and also on the human health leading to more degradation in the environmental quality okay having understood the impact of human population growth on the environment and human health let us now discuss the second topic in this unit which is resettlement and rehabilitation of project affected persons okay now this is a illustration where you can see people are moving somewhere okay you can see lot of people they are moving with all of their belongings to some other place on the in the right side uh, illustration so what is first of all what is resettlement and what is rehabilitation okay see th- these are nothing but forms of displacement of people isn't it now why this displacement ha- uh, has seen or occurs uh it is because of developmental projects okay displacements have occurred as a result of developmental projects as a result of political conflict political conflict means many refugees you might have heard of their issues that uh, we have they have come from another country to the border of our country so this is a political conflict setting up of a protected area network that means if a forest is there and it is declared either a wildlife sanctuary or a national park then there are some restrictions they are more stringent when national parks are to be declared and then because of natural disasters like floods and cyclones earthquakes all of these are responsible for displacement of people Okay, so in India, these are the major reasons that developmental projects, political conflict, setting up of a protected area, natural disasters, they have resulted in the displacement of people from one place to another. What is resettlement? Resettlement means change in geographical location and provision of basic infrastructure. change in geographical location of people that is movement of people from one place to another and giving them the basic infrastructure okay in some in the place where they have migrated or moved then rehabilitation rehabilitation is a different concept see it includes resettlement but it also takes into consideration the factor of empowerment of affected families what do you mean by empowerment that they should be given some sort of livelihood okay some sort of way that so that they can earn their livelihood and that is the empowerment also when people move from one place to other they have issues of cultural assimilation isn't it the people at new place they might not accept them or they find difficult to get accepted by those people so cultural assimilation is again another issue so when we talk about rehabilitation we consider empowerment along with resettlement okay resettlement can be just change in the geographical location that is movement from one place to other and giving the basic infrastructure to the affected persons but rehabilitation means giving them a source of livelihood and uh, empowerment of the families which are affected by the resettlement now what are the causes of rehabilitation and resettlement there are developmental projects so if the government wants to make a bridge or a dam 
these are the major reasons why people are rehabilitated then political conflict political conflict is again between two states it can be between a country and another country also so people tend to move from one country to other country that will be a political conflict again movement from one state to other that will also be a political conflict so that is uh, issues of uh, refugees from that is people from other country uh, moving into our countries again the causes of rehabilitation resettlement that means if in their country they are facing some kind of war or they are not get, getting the cultural identity there so people tend to move to the other country you might have heard of rohingya issue you know, people lot of people have migrated from myanmar because of it so that is a political conflict okay then natural disasters natural disasters like flood isn't it because of flood people living in the coastal areas they tend to come or settle in the peninsula that means in the in inner areas where again the floods will not will, will not be uh, there or again the earthquakes also there are earthquake zones in the country where earthquakes are felt at regular intervals so people tend to so those people can all, are also rehabilitated or resettled at different place then what are the challenges faced by people during resettlement and rehabilitation see first of all in availability of arable land arable land means cultivable land isn't it if they are migrating from one place to other that is from their old homes to the new homes in the new homes they might not get a good land isn't it which which has a good nutrient quality or it na- it might not be cultivable also so nothing can be grown in that land so there is inavailability of arable land that is a issue which they face because similar ecological conditions might not exist isn't it in in their field which they were living for the past generations which was uh, very rich in the the soil in the field was very rich in nutrients they might not get the same uh, land with the ecological physical and also there might not be similar socio cultural settings in the locations where they have been resettled isn't it moving to another place and the society over there or the culture over there has to assimilate the migrants or the resettled people isn't it therefore that is another challenge faced by the people again first is the willingness of people to relocate many a times uh, there has to be an understanding developed between the people who will be resettled and rehabilitated you cannot just say them go to them and say that now this land government wants it for a development project and you need to move to this new location uh early as possible no this is not the way there is a dialogue which has to be established isn't it the people need to be convinced for resettlement and rehabilitation then changing they face the problem of change in livelihood yes if a particular this is faced by tribal communities okay tribal communities they are dependent on the forest produce for their livelihood they are completely dependent on the forest for their livelihood now clearing of the forest for any project developmental project you are reset doing the resettlement and rehabilitation of tribal people okay the source of livelihood was forest now you are moving them to a new land where you are telling them to cultivate the land is it possible with a easy uh, change no they, they 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 are not willing to do that isn't it so the change in livelihood is not easy it will take many years for them to understand how the cultivation actually occurs isn't it so this is again a 
difficulty or challenge faced by the people then there is insufficient economic support see government on its part it tries its best to give the packages give the economic support but again at the ground level its implementation has to be proper okay many a times at ground level it is not implemented properly and each the needs of each and every uh, person who is who is uh, affected by resettlement and rehabilitation is not met okay so it's very difficult on the government's part also and on the people's part also to understand how it uh, how to manage this situation okay so there is insufficient economic support in the new area then very important challenges cultural assimilation again the tribes that are living in the forest they are they have a culture of their own okay and if they are moved to a land we can say so called the civilized society so there is a difference in the culture isn't it tribes they have a culture of uh, celebrating the festivals they have a culture of celebrating the harvest then keeping keeping uh, some animals along with them so this this might not be accepted in the new area isn't it so cultural assimilation is again a huge challenge faced by the rehabilitated people always remember resettlement and rehabilitation is going to affect both male and female equally but this gender uh, aspect is not taken into consideration isn't it because every individual is going to be affected male is going to affect it because he is the uh, one who earns the source of livelihood female will also be affected because she has to set the household to a new place isn't it so all of these have to be taken into consideration and all of these challenges are faced by the people who are affected by resettlement and rehabilitation having understood this let us now discuss the case study of sardar sarovar project okay this is one of the ambitious project of the government this project is created on river narmada see river narmada is the fifth largest river in our country okay it originates in the maikal range at amar kanthak in madhya pradesh this river narmada flows in deep valley between vindhya range in the north and satpura range in the south okay between 1979 and 2004 three dams were built across this river bargi dam in madhya pradesh then indira sagar in madhya pradesh and sardar sarovar in gujarat so it was one of the ambitious plan of the government of creating 3000 large and small dams sardar sarovar project was taken up in the year 1987 so government wanted to create 3000 large and small dams and it, sardar sarovar was one of those so it was taken up in 1987 so what happened that in 1992 sardar sarovar punar vasvat agency was constituted okay what was this agency what was its work it was for implementing this resettlement and rehabilitation activities of the sardar sarovar project affected families that means those families which were affected by sardar sarovar project the resettlement and rehabilitation of these families was done by sardar sarovar punar vasavat agency okay so this agency was implementing the rehabilitation activities in the state of gujarat so what was given that sardar sarovar project had infrastructural facilities like schools were there clinics were there children parks were there drinking water was given a sustainable 
income generation package was also given to those affected by the so the package included all of these facilities that is infrastructural facilities schools clinics then children parks drinking water sustainable income generation package to those of the affected families so the some of the activities by of sardar sarovar punar vasvat agency were acquiring ration cards by the project affected families isn't it to a new place they need some identity card so for that the responsibility was given to the agency getting financial assistance in the form of loans and subsidies so if any of the affected family requires some financial assistance in the form of loans and subsidies that was also made available to them then coordinating various ngos which were involved in the process of resettlement and rehabilitation taking care of medical requirements of the people and education related issues so it was uh, one of the planned project and therefore all of these were provided to those who were affected despite having these facilities there were some drawbacks to the drawbacks in this project okay some of the drawbacks were that many tribal communities they did not had legal documents and therefore they were not benefited from the land ownership okay due to because tribal community is from where they'll bring the documents isn't it so they were not benefited by land ownership so these were regarded as encroachers in the packages that were offered uh and they were offered some limited packages okay then a study shows that many households felt that their lives have deter- deteriorated after the relocation that means they were not happy with the relocation because of the degraded quality of the agricultural land and the condition of other amenities so people were not happy after being relocated because the new agricultural land that was provided first of all the quality was not good or it was of degraded quality and also the amenities that means the package included all the amenities of clinics schools and education related amenities but all of these were uh, not so if people have to be rehabilitated there it is an intensive process every aspect of this rehabilitation that is the government the agencies which are established the officers the ngos they have to work together or there has to be a collective uh, understanding between all these institutions so in order to rebuild people's physical and economic livelihood so the people have to given the amenities or the infrastructure at the same way they have to be provided with the some economic source so that they can thrive isn't it and also there have there has to be some cultural and social links between the new area and the people who are relocated there otherwise the issue of cultural assimilation it becomes difficult for uh, for the people okay so we have discussed the growth effect of human population growth on so we have discussed the effect of human population growth on the environment and also on the human health we have seen how this uh, affects the environment with respect to agriculture then the fresh water sources pollution is there air water and soil then global warming is there and there is ozone layer depletion there then this might lead to extinction of the species then we have seen that uh, human health is also impacted where there is there are increased instances of communicable disease 
and then we have discussed about the resettlement and rehabilitation of persons that there is a difference between resettlement and rehabilitation resettlement means just changing the geographical location and giving basic infrastructure but rehabilitation means the people who are affected by resettlement they have to be empowered isn't it they have to be given some source of livelihood and we have discussed about the causes of rehabilitation and resettlement and various challenges faced by the people then we have discussed the case of sardar sarovar project that it included uh, various it included an economic package